I've been editing for over three years and gained a total of 250,000 subscribers. So today I will show you how to make this exact velocity edit so you can look cool and start going viral. To make our edit, it's very important that we have our clips and sound ready. If you need inspiration, I personally scroll on TikTok and look at viral edits to find my audios. And for the clips, I just look in so-called scene pack discord servers. I'll leave you some good ones in the description. Once we open the After Effects, you're going to be met with this screen. And the first thing we have to do is create our new project to make our edit in. To do that, head to the center and click on new composition. And in here, we first of all have to set our resolution, meaning in which size our edit will be. I personally want to have this nice square look, so I'm going to go for 1080 by 1080. But there's loads of different formats, for example, 1080 by 1920, 1080 by 1350, or like in this case, 1080 by 1080. Which one you choose is completely up to you. Next, we have to set our frame rate, which will be our FPS, and we want our edit to look as smooth as possible. So we're going to set it to 60, and the higher you go with this value, the smoother your edit will be, but anything past 60 won't be processed by social media apps anyway. Lastly, we have to change the duration to however long you want your edit to be. In my case, 15 seconds. Once that's done, press on OK, and now we can see our timeline, our preview, and our entire workspace. As of now, our preview is still empty, so we're going to start by importing our sound and footage into After Effects. And to do that, click to the top on File, then head to Import and select File. In my case, I put my sound and scene pack into one folder, so I can just select both of them and then click on to Import. Once it's done loading, you will see them popping up in your project panel. By clicking on them and then dragging them to our timeline, we will have them appear in our preview. Now that we imported our footage, the first thing we want to do is mark our beat drops. What that means is that in a velocity edit, we obviously want the speed of our clip to change whilst our music is playing. And to know the points where our clip is supposed to play faster, we have to look at the audio and then highlight the certain parts. Doing that is pretty simple. Start by disabling the sound of your scene pack by clicking onto the speaker and then right click onto your sound. Go to keyframe assistant and hit convert audio into keyframes. Now you can see we have a third layer, which is this red one. And if you click on that, then press U on our keyboard, you can see we have all these keyframes. And by clicking onto the both channel slider and then opening up the graph editor right here, we will make the beat drops visible. And don't worry, this looks more confusing than it actually is. Basically, what this tells us is that at every spike that we see, for example, this one right here, if we zoom in a bit, every time we have this spike, there's going to be a beat drop. This way, it's easier for us to find out and we don't have to guess. And obviously, remembering all these points is going to be very hard. So what we're going to do is drag our time indicator, which is this blue line, exactly onto the spike and then we're going to head to the right side you can see this little marker symbol and if we click on that once it will create a numbered marker on the exact frame our time indicator is on so now we can repeat this process for every beat drop meaning if we see the next spike which is going to be right here we can go back to our marker and then click it again this time it's going to be the number two and then if we go to the next one it's going to be number three and so on very important though make sure you listen along to the audio because sometimes it may be inaccurate after we're done marking all the beat drops your timeline should look something like this and if you wonder why i didn't mark the ones that come past here it's because after this ninth speed drop, I want to loop my edit, meaning have it play twice. What we're going to do now is close the graph editor and then delete this layer by just selecting it and then pressing delete on your keyboard. Our next step is going to be finding the clips because chances are that if you have an entire scene pack from a movie, you want to cut out a certain scene and that's why we have to chop around a bit. First things first, because I set my composition to a square, my movie obviously doesn't fit. You can see his forehead is kind of cut off and to fix that, I'm going to click onto my top footage layer and then press S on my keyboard. This will bring up the scaling and I can now just decrease this value and it will make my character fit into space. Once you adjusted that, we're going to double click onto the footage layer. And if we zoom out, it will bring up this extra layer where you can see the entire footage. So now it's not just limited to the small square, but it shows the entire screen. You also may notice that below our preview, we have this mini timeline right here. This basically allows us, if we use this mini time indicator here, to scroll ahead throughout the entire movie. What we got to do is find the exact scene we want to use for our edit. So use your mini time indicator and just drag it ahead until you find the scene you want to use in your edit. Once you found the scene, which in my case, I want to use this scene right here. You're going to go onto this bracket right below our mini timeline and click it once. If we head back to our main timeline, you can see it will automatically cut to that place in time. One thing that's very important when you make a velocity edit is that you don't just use clips where there's no movement. Your character should be walking, maybe turning or tilting his head. If he's just standing still and doing nothing, the velocity will lose its effect. Also, in my case, I want to use two different clips of the same character whilst the music is changing. So I'm going to go ahead on the main timeline with my time indicator until the place where the beat changes, which is right here at the fifth marker. Then I'm going to have my footage layer selected and press Ctrl, Shift and D to cut it. As you can see, it's now split into two and we can re-double click onto the top layer and now just repeat the process of dragging ahead your mini time indicator until you want to find the next scene you want to use for your edit, which in my case is going to be this one. Once you found it, again, go to the bracket on the left, click it once and on our main timeline, you should see that our scene pack got cut to that place in time. Now I'm going to close this preview layer because I no longer need it by heading to the top and clicking the little X next to the layer. Once you're back in your main composition, also don't forget to cut your clip at the end so go to the last beat drop and then cut it by
by pressing Control shift and D. Delete everything that comes past this, and now you should be left with two nice clips. The next thing we have to do is get our characters into the center of the screen, because if we look at it right now, you can see that my character starts all the way on the left, where he's not visible, and then slowly, once the clip is progressing, moves into the center of the screen, which is obviously not what we want. We want our character to be visible at all times. To fix that, select the clip, and then press P on your keyboard. That should bring up your positioning values, and we can now just increase or decrease the value on the left, depending on your clip, and then it will move our character into the center of the screen, as you can see. Make sure you do this for both clips. And once our character is nice and center, we're going to get into the interesting part, which is adding our slow motion. Before we do that, we just have to make sure we isolate the clips. So head to the left and enable motion blur, which is this button right here for both clips. And then also frame blending for both clips by just clicking this box twice. Once it looks like this, we're going to right click onto the layer, go to pre-compose, make sure the bottom two options are selected, and then press on OK. And again, do that for both clips. And if you already lost track and you're too lazy, don't worry because the project file of this edit will be available to all my community members alongside the hour-long courses. Make sure you join via the second link in the description. Let's get to the slow motion. To make our slow motion, we're going to use an effect called Twixter. And to use it, we're going to head to the right and click on to effects and presets. In here, we're going to search for Twixter. And at the very bottom, we're going to apply Twixter Pro to our layer by just dragging it on there. And if you can't find this effect inside your After Effects, it's because you don't have the plugin installed. But I will also leave you a Discord server in the description where you can download it. Unfortunately, Twixter does not do the velocity on its own, so we have to change some settings. Let's start by putting the image prep from none to contrast slash edge enhance. The frame interpolation we're going to put from blend to motion weighted blend. And the warping we're going to put from inverse to inverse with smart blend. Once that's completed, we have to go to our first speed drop, which in my case is right here. And then set a keyframe for our speed percentage. The standard value is 100%, which means that your clip will be playing at 100% of its speed. The higher you go, the faster it will be. And the lower you go, the slower it will be. But for the first speed drop, we're going to leave it at 100. Then we're going to select the layer and press the U button on our keyboard. That will bring up the keyframe we just created. And now we're going to go ahead to the second beat drop right here and then put the value from 100 up to 140. Do the same thing for the third marker. So just go here and then again, set a keyframe for 140. Same thing at the fourth marker, again, 140. And for the last one, the fifth one, also 140. Now we have five keyframes, four of them at 140 and one at 100. The most important step comes now because in between all of these keyframes, we're going to add a second keyframe, which will create our slow motion. So start by going in between the first and second one, which is approximately here and create a keyframe for the value 40. Then go in between the next ones, which is two and three. And again, create a second keyframe for the value 40. Now go between three and four. And like earlier, again, put it down to 40. One last time between four and five. Again, we're going to set a second keyframe and put the value to 40. To help you understand, now every time our beat drops, the clip will accelerate to 140% of its speed. And then right after, it will slow down to 40%, which will create this nice slow motion effect. After it's slowed down to 40%, again, it will go up to 140. And this process repeats over and over until our clip is over. But to make the transition between the different speeds a bit smoother, we're going to select all of them, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then hit easy ease. Then open up the graph editor. And in here, we can change the speed in which our animation is playing. Start with the very first graph, zoom in a little bit. And the way I like to change these graphs is just clicking on them. And then these top two handles, I'm going to drag down like this. So for the one on the left, and then for the right one, also, we're going to drag it down. And you can see this next one, we're going to drag down about the same amount. And then we're going to continue this until we're finished with all our graphs. Once that's done, we can close the graph editor and we're going to repeat the same process for however many clips you have. Once you applied the same steps to the next clip as well, it should look something like this. You should start out with 140, then your speed should go down to 40 and then again up to 140 and so on. Next thing we have to do is add some flashes that will just boost up the overall appearance and make the beat drops stand out a bit more. The effect I will use for this is called exposure. So go to your effects and presets and search for exposure. Once you found it, drag it onto your layer and we're going to create a keyframe for the exposure at the very first beat drop. Put the value from 0 to 1. And again, we can press U to bring up the keyframes. Zoom in a bit and we're going to go 5 frames to the left. You can count by just using your time indicator. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are 5 frames. And here we're going to put the value back down to 0. So select the exposure and put the value from 1 to 0. Now when we play ahead, you can see our clip gets brighter, but we obviously want it to get dark again. So zoom out and then go ahead a few frames before your next speed drop starts. For me, approximately here. And then again, we're going to set the exposure to 0. This time for the animation graph, all we have to do is easy Easy ease. So select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then select easy ease. That will be enough. And we want to have this flash on every beat drop. So we're going to select the keyframes and press control and C. That way we will copy them. And we can just go ahead to the next beat drop and then press control and V and we'll automatically paste them. Only thing you want to check is if the beat drop and our flash align. As you can see in my case, the number two, we're going to zoom in and you can see our keyframe for the flash perfectly aligns. If it looks something like this, just drag it till it fits. And like before, the process is the exact same for all your clips. So if you have two clips, make sure you have 
apply the flash to every beat drop. The next thing we want to do to bring in some smoothness is adding these zooms. And to add our zooms, we're going to create a null layer. So head to the top, click on layer, then select new and click on null object. That should create a red layer on top of your clips. And now we have to select both of our layers by holding control and clicking on them. And then on the left side where it says parent and link, we can use this whip tool to just drag it onto the null layer. After you've done that, it should also say null in here. If we select our null and then press S on our keyboard, for example, and we increase the scaling, you can see our clip will also zoom in. Why we do that is because now we can just use it on both the clips equally and we don't have to make separate keyframes for both clips. The first scaling keyframe we're going to create on our null object is going to be a few frames before our editing part starts. So just go ahead a few frames and then set a keyframe at 100. And now I will show you a secret that will make it easier to apply these keyframes. If you remember earlier that we made these single keyframes, which are just the slowed down Twixter, we can use those as orientation for our scaling. So every time we have one of these keyframes right here, we're going to set a keyframe on our null object for the scaling. It's always going to be the second one. So we're going to start with this and we're going to go to this one, this one. So always jump to a head. The value we put now is going to be dependent on how much zoom in you want. In my case, I like to go for 120%. So I'm going to create a second keyframe right in this place and time and put the value to 120. Then I'm going to jump two keyframes to the next one and put it back down to 100. Then again, jump two keyframes ahead till we're here and put the value back up to 120. Continue this process to the very end of your edit. For the last keyframe before our edit ends, again, make sure you drag it out a bit like the first one. For this zoom in effect, it's going to be very important changing the graphs because if we look at it now, you can see it looks very choppy and not smooth at all. So select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease. Open the graph editor and this time we're going to use a slightly different graph. But first things first, let's start with the first graph, zoom in a bit and then click on it. The graph we want to use here is very simple. Just start by dragging the bottom handle to the right, approximately this much. And then the top handle, we're going to drag it to the opposite direction. So we're going to drag it to the left. For the next graph, it's going to be the other way around. So start with the top handle and drag it to the right this time. Then the bottom one, we're going to drag to the left till it looks approximately the same as the first. Make sure you apply these values to all your graphs. And once that's done, close the graph editor and also cut the null object. So we're going to go to the beginning where our first B drop is happening and cut our null object by pressing Control Shift and D and delete everything that comes before that. Same at the end. So we're going to go to our last B drop and then press Control Shift and D to delete everything that comes past this point. Next and most important is going to be adding a good color correction. To do that, go to the top and click on layer. Select new and then click on adjustment layer. And if you want to get the color correction I use to turn my edits from looking like this into looking like this, which is one click, make sure to check the first link in the description because I'm currently still running a huge opportunity in my shop. You can get up to 70% of the presets that I use to make my edits look the best as possible. Limited time offer. After we edit the color correction, we also want to make sure our edit replays after the end. And what we have to do to achieve that is go to the very beginning and then also cut our first layer. So we're going to separate the intro and the editing part by just clicking Control Shift and D. And then all these three clips, meaning our first editing part, our second clip and null object, we're going to select and pre-compose together by right clicking and selecting pre-compose. Now all of them are going to be compressed and we can duplicate our layer by pressing Control and D. And then we can drag it to replay where our first part ends right here. And that way we duplicate our edit. And what's very typical for velocity edits that it doesn't just replay, but it actually reverses the clip. And to get this effect, we're going to go to our effects and presets and search for S underscore reverse clip. Make sure you only drag it onto the second layer, which is the top one and not the bottom one. Last but not least, we also want to increase the look of our intro because right now there's just not a big transition going on. I personally like to use these low quality intros for my velocity edits. And the first effect I want to use is called black and white. Drag it only onto the intro clip. The second effect is called S underscore JPEG damage. Again, only drag it onto the first layer. And in here, the only value I change is the quality. So the higher you go, the more quality you're going to have. And the lower you go, the less quality you're going to have. See, it's going to look very pixelated. I like to go for something in the middle. So I'm going to go for 0.15. And currently the transition between our intro and editing part doesn't look that good because it just changes. So I want to add this cool white one frame transition. Head to the top and click on layer. Then select new and solid. Make sure you set the color from black to white and then press OK. Now obviously our solid layer will cover the entire timeline. And to make it a bit shorter, I'm going to zoom in a bit and then cut it by pressing Control Shift and D. I want mine to be two frames long, so I'm going to make it two frames like this. Delete the excess parts and make sure it overlaps the clips. Now when it transitions, it will have this nice white animation. There's hundreds of different transitions you could use in this scenario and showing all of them would take a bit too much time. So I made a separate tutorial, which you can watch in the top right corner. And to add the last bit of suspense to our intro, we want to make it fade in so it doesn't appear out of nowhere. For that, select the layer and then press T on your keyboard. Set a keyframe at the very beginning and put the value down to zero. As you can see, our screen turned black and now go ahead approximately one and a half seconds and put the value back up to 100. That way you can see our intro will be fading in like this. To get this added out of After Effects without losing quality, we have to head to the top and click on to composition. Select add to render queue. And if you have After Effects 2023 or above, you can 
just use the normal H.264 encoder. If you don't, click on it once and then for the format, select QuickTime. Press on OK. Then set your output, meaning where you want data to be saved. And finally, click on Render. Note that this might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. And if this tutorial helped you, you have to subscribe, leave a like, and also check out the second link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.